Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. Okay, my, ta my uh, topic is called Mapping India. And this story takes place about 200 years ago, starting in the, in the year 1800. Uh, this is an amazing story. Uh, as he said, I'm a big uh, history of science junkie. And this is one of the great stories from the history of science. This is all going to take place in India, this story. And uh, in 1800, India was run by the, India, uh, the, the British East India Company. I think you've heard that. If you saw the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie, you know who they were. They were kind of dicks. And, uh, but while they, while they uh, hung out on the coast and had lots of ports, the interior of India was completely unknown to Westerners. And so hopefully this story is going to have someone really hardcore that can handle anything. You know, and cause but unfortunately, this is the star of the story. This kind of wimpy guy. This is a guy named William Lambton. William Lambton was a military officer. He fought for the British in the Revolutionary War for about 45 minutes and then was captured. Then he went off and became a surveyor in Canada. And then in 1800, he shipped to India to be a surveyor. Like any surveyor back then, one of the biggest questions that Lambton worried about was, what is the shape of the Earth? This actually mattered a lot. This was like the dark matter question of the 1800s. Lambton gets to India and he says, I'm going to map India. And he says, I'm going to do it by just using triangles. He he pitches this crazy idea. You remember, who went to high school? Uh, if you remember in high school, uh, if you know the length of a, one side of a triangle and two angles, you can then figure out the other dimensions. Lambda had this insane idea of using surveying tools to make this big series of triangles that was going to cover all of India, and he was going to map India better than anyone ever had. And along the way, he would figure out the precise shape of the Earth. And they actually buy this. East India Company goes, OK, cool. So he goes to Madras. He goes to, this is the racetrack in Madras, India. It's still there today. You can still bet on the ponies. He starts there. He measures the first line of the first triangle. He takes two months to measure seven and a half miles, and then he heads out into the jungle. And this is such a balls out thing. This is just some of the stuff you had to worry about. It's dusty, so you can't see through your telescopes. There's jungles, there's swamps. People got eaten by tigers. I mean, you'd be standing there with a the telescope, and a fucking tiger would come out and eat you. You know? Uh, you got typhoid, malaria. He had, oh, he had typhoid and malaria at the same time. That's a real fun. Uh, all these other scientific things, and he had to do all these calculations. He took 9,230 measurements over the course of this uh, thing to uh, think about crunching all those numbers. He couldn't always see through the jungle, so they started building these towers. Imagine setting these up in the middle of the jungle and then tearing them down, then moving them, setting them up again. Just completely crazy. He did all the measurements with this scientific device, and it's going to show up. There it is. This is a uh, a theodolite, believe it or not, in like 1810, this was the most precise scientific instrument in the world. And uh, that guy was not around in 1819 or 1810, but he looks like he might have been. And uh, so he did all of these measurements and uh, crunched all these numbers. Over the course of 23 years, he worked on this and he finally died. That's actually a shot of his grave in, in the center of India. Very sad. Everyone say, ah. He, uh, he dies in 1923, only about halfway through India. So how are we going to finish this project? This is his second in command. This is Colonel George Efrest. When I say Efrest, you say asshole, by the way, because he, he was kind of a jerk. He was a great geographer, but he took over for Lambton when Lambton died in 19, or in 1823. They couldn't be more different. Lambton loved India. The Indians loved him. He married an Indian woman, and his sons worked on the project. Everest hated the... Yeah, thank you. Uh, hated the Indians, called them wogs and worse. He was a petty, mean, vindictive guy. But he was a great geographer, and he finished the project. This is a map. Look at all the triangles. Some of them are 50 miles on a side, some much smaller. This is all the way from the tip of India up to the Himalayas. I'm going to have a better picture of it in just a second here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. But he, they covered all of India over the course of about 47 years. And then it moved up over the Himalayas into Central Asia, down towards Southeast Asia. And an unbelievably extraordinary piece of engineering. And uh, in 1847, at the top 
of India. At the end of the project, they took a couple of shots to a distant mountain about 100 miles away, crunched the numbers, and realized they had found the highest place on Earth, which the surveying uh, party named Mount Everest. The people back in England didn't know how to pronounce his name, and that's why we call it Mount Everest. So, so I want you to remember two things. William Lambton was an amazing guy, did, did this super hardcore uh, bit of surveying. Uh, George Everest, kind of an asshole. And if it was a better word, the highest point on the earth would be called Mount Lambton. Thank you very much.